All right, so I've been gaming, and I'm sure you have too. But you know what's really the bane of my gaming existence? That is modern gaming. All right. See, it's taken over, and I've just had enough of these second jobs, which are basically disguised as fun, okay? You see, I've been playing a lot of single-player games lately, some, of the, some on the older side, you know? And, you know, it's just, nowadays, gaming doesn't really respect your free time, it seems. Like, on Thursday, I made a video about nostalgia and how much fun it was playing games with friends and family, enjoying a good single-player experience, and basically just having a blast with games. And in that video, I talked a tad bit about battle passes, a little bit about modern gaming, but this is the video that's going to delve a little bit deeper into the world of modern gaming, alright? Modern gaming, woo. So battle passes are the worst. As I said, they pout out your gaming time, they don't respect your free time, and for instance, look at Fortnite, which by the way has gotten a little bit worse, but I'll talk about that in a little bit. We got Halo Infinite, Overwatch 2, and the worst of them all in my opinion, the worst offender, Call of Duty. And you see, I could sort of justify battle passes on free-to-play titles, but for a $60 and $70 game title, yeah, no, I don't think so. Um, if you remember, you used to pay $60 for a game and basically just felt proud of what you earned, you know? You got rewards for doing certain things, like beating the campaign or getting multi and multiplayer. Uh, essentially, for me, I'm talking about Halo 3, your rewards were your armor pieces for doing certain things, and it just felt pretty good. It felt accomplished, you know? But now, it just kind of feels like a job with everything being laid out for you before, you know, you didn't necessarily know how you got it, but you know you got it, and that was awesome. Obviously, the internet's here now, so you can kind of figure that out yourself. But, like, when you see somebody with a fancy item nowadays, you know that they either just bought it or it was in the battle pass. The old way was sort of random, but you at least knew, okay, you at least knew that the person who has that item earned it, right? These daily and weekly challenges are pretty absurd now, too. Uh, again, talking about Fortnite, a lot of people complete their challenges through bot lobbies. And I'm not trying to throw shade at anyone, but like, it just kind of proves how hard these challenges can be to get done. Um, a lot of players try to ruin your fun, and you really can't just get everything done like that. I feel like this is a sign that something is fundamentally wrong with the system, right? And these weekly and daily quests also bring out some FOMO, which, if you don't know what that means, it's the fear of missing out. Uh, essentially, this is what I was talking about Fortnite, what they changed. They changed the weeklies now for this season. So on Fortnite, once the week is over, the challenge is gone, and it's gone forever. Just like that. It's a blatant way to make sure players get on the game at least once a week to complete the challenge. Before, it wasn't like that at all. You could go on the last week of the game, complete all of the weeklies, and get all your XP. Now you can't do that. Now you have to get on the game. And it's just it's just worse, you know? It's just not as good. And to make matters worse, the way they changed it as well is that all these challenges are staged, meaning, let's say, you have to complete 10 eliminations for the challenge. Well, cool, I hit the 10 elims, I got the challenge done, right? No, the next stage, you're going to have to get 20 elims, and so on and so on. And essentially, it just keeps you on the game longer. I feel like that's not right. That's not really cool. It's kind of understandable why <laughs> uh, Epic Games has their lawsuit going on right now. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I just remember before Fortnite even came out, I was intrigued by Save the World. And now look at Save the World. It might as well just be shut down uh, as the updates and the bug fixes or as slow as molasses, you know? Uh, it's just because, you know, Epic Games knows that Battle Royale is their big money maker. You know, it's their big money maker. It's kind of scary because, you know, Save the World was basically their campaign mode and that was the original concept of Fortnite. Now it's really gone and all you got are these battle passes and microtransactions. It's like the norm. And I know I said microtransactions, but $20 for a skin? Yeah, that's not that micro, dog. <laughs> it's just, my point being, this is also repetitive and they try to get you with fancy looking and licensed items. But enough is enough. So, <laughs> microtrans microtransactions. Such a joke, okay? Because, unless of course, you're like me, one of the victims, yours truly, I, yes, I, I do fall prey to the siren song of Fortnite's virtual store, all right? Peer pressure, you know, your friends get a skin, it's like, oh, I got Piccolo, you should get Gohan, oh, okay, sort of thing. Uh, and, you know, the thing is, though, when you do buy these skins, you, the endorphins kind of hit, the dopamine hits, it just, it just gets you when you're trying to buy something new. It's a pretty vicious cycle, all right? Again, no wonder Epic Games is facing their multi-million dollar lawsuit. They just keep adding these licensed cosmetics 
from Naruto to Goku, Patrick Mahomes to LeBron James, and we just keep buying. I mean, it's cosmetic, right? Can't be that bad. But seriously, $20 for a cosmetic item, that's definitely not micro. That's basically how we rob you, you know? It's just like prying into your psyche, and it just makes it so, well, yeah, we could justify that. But it, it, ugh. But that's just cosmetic, though, and that's just Fortnite. Again, it's a free-to-play game. I could sort of justify it to an extent, so I'm not really going to go too hard into that. The real micro-scammers, as I'm going to call them, are the ones who charge for in-game items for a game that you paid, you know, your Sunday dollars for, you know, like FIFA Ultimate Team 4 and B2K. Uh, you already paid your hefty sum up front, now you have to pay even more to have a chance of winning. Uh, again, from FIFA's Ultimate Team, which has you pay real currency for card packs that grant you a chance of getting good players, make a team. So there is a new pack in FIFA that for Team of the Year looks kind of crazy. This is a 500,000 coin pack, contains one foot hero to be rated 87 or higher, 75 gold rare players, and also 86 or higher player in there as well with five of them being guaranteed. So let's see if this pack is truly you know, worthwhile guys, you do have a chance there, 1.1% of a team of the year player, team of the icon at 2.4. So let's see if this is terrible or worth it or when are points ever worth it though, let's be honest. Oh my, oh my God, I thought that was team of the year. Right, I have got though, Mario Gomez in this new year special pack. Three in forms, loads of walkouts, have we got a team of the year? Or an icon? The answer is no. We go again. And same thing with the NBA. They not only do the same, but for 2K, it allows uh, you to up your character stats, change their animations for you know your advantage. Uh, but what's worse with NBA 2K, in my opinion, is basically gambling. They have slot machines, wheels to spin, uh, even betting options where you can even like bet your in-game currency on real life basketball games to me it's pretty disgusting and it can definitely feed on addiction and yet no one's talking and the game still has an e rating i don't know how that's possible it's just kind of disheartening to see that the blind eye is being turned all right so if something seems off um my recording kind of corrupted so i got to re-record a little bit but uh anyways as i was saying it's kind of uh sad, disheartening to see that they turned a blind eye to those practices um, but in conclusion, before I truly, really end the video, I kind of want to talk about two single player experiences that I had that really had me a little bit confused. Um, those being Horizon Zero Dawn and Dead Space 3. You see, they've taken a different approach to things. Uh, for example, in Horizon Zero Dawn, the fast travel, the fast travel, the fast travel is a luxury, essentially. Um, so like you have to craft and it, it's like having to bake a cake, but you have to buy the ingredients every time you want to bake a cake. I don't understand why they do that. It's a single player game. There's no really no need to pad out the time. So that's just kind of like a mind blow for me. Um, but also, I don't want to forget about Dead Space 3. Because when I first played that, um, I was really confused because it's a survival horror game, right? But it's a little bit too easy because the microtransactions get your resources like ammo and such. It's like having a get out of jail free card in a haunted house. And it genuinely makes zero sense to why that's a thing. Where's the challenge in that? There really isn't. And top it all off, the thing that really grinded my gears about this is that the DLC to get the real ending, the actual ending, the full ending of the game, to this day, I still have not, like, beaten the game. I don't know how it truly ends, because the DLC is the end of the game. EA, back in the day, did that, and I would, I could imagine they're still doing some similar practices to this day. Maybe not to that extent, but it's pretty bad. It's developers like these that are uh, borrowing practices from the multiplayer world that really confuse me. I don't know if they dev multiplayer games in the past or, or anything, but that just seemed a little bit off to me, alright? It's, it, it's a bit of a head scratcher for sure. Um, but again, like I said on my nostalgia video, uh, there's still the good old days of single player games, you know, the older games. Well, you know, when you beat the game, if you're satisfied, and that's the end of the story. It was simple, fun, and not really a job. So uh, you have to go back to those. And even though some games have changed, you can always go back and revisit them classics, you know? Um, if you made it this far, though, don't forget to like and subscribe. All right, make you out.